And can you put it on um, the slideshow so it enlarges a little bit, I think? Excellent, excellent. If everybody could please make sure you're muted unless you have some questions or comments you'd like to make. Uh, first off, um, thanks everyone for joining us this evening uh, on what we're calling a, a club champion session to deal with volunteer opportunities for the big party that's coming up in Calgary next June. Uh, I also want to thank you for um, stepping up and being representing your club as the club champion. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's a critical job. The host organizing committee uh, wants to thank you all. And we see you as really uh, integral in everything that we want to do to make the Calgary Convention a success. In terms of, um, oh, sorry, Linda, I guess you're managing it. You, next slide, please. So here's what we're going to cover in tonight's agenda. Just a few welcome and opening remarks, which I've kind of done. I pulled a few slides out from a training presentation that we did for our Calgary ambassadors who went to Singapore. So those that were uh, participated in that session back in early May, uh, you're going to see some of the same slides. Um, to have a look at, but for those that have not experienced it, then it might, it might be some new information for you. Um, then there's a little bit on the, on the post organizing committee 2025 club champions. That's you folks here tonight. And uh, we were fortunate that we have a couple of members as well from the host organizing committee uh, that will uh, make some comments during the, during the evening. In terms of volunteer opportunities, what I know now, what I know today, uh, there's quite a, quite a list of opportunities tied in with the program and what the host organizing committee has. So we're going to kind of flush that out a little bit as to what we know currently. And then Pat Newman from the uh, Rotary Club of Calgary at Stampede Park is going to say uh, a few words about home hospital home and host hospitality and what's that all about and what she really needs to move forward. And then Darcy McShin is here to, um, he's a co-chair along with Miriam Mitchell Banks. Uh, Darcy's from the red, one of the Red Deer Clubs and Miriam is from Calgary uh, Centennial. And they're going to, uh, he's, Darcy's going to talk about the, um, their, their roles in, in, on the host organizing committee in terms of promoting and marketing uh, the convention next year. And we'll end up with Q&A, but I'm going to suggest that as we go through the uh, presentation, if you do have questions that need to be addressed, I think just unmute yourself and holler and or put your hand up. And I've got Linda managing the slides for me. So hopefully between the two of us, we won't miss your questions. But Sometimes it's um, better to, to address the questions as you go through, uh, as we go through the presentation. <clears throat> Next slide, please, Linda. So this is just an overview. Again, this was a, a slide deck that was prepared by uh, Calgary Tourism. And um, I've just uh, taken that a couple of these slides, as I said, to kind of bring people up to speed. But... This is all about the magic of Rotary is the president's theme for 24-25. The convention will be held at the convention campus, all at Stampede Park, where the general sessions will be held in the Saddle Dome, the House of Friendship, Breakout, and other sessions, I believe, are all being scheduled at the BM, BMO Center. I don't believe there are any other venues on the Stampede grounds at this point in time that I'm aware of. Then we have the signature events and um, home host hospitality, which Pat will cover later. And then, of course, this is the website that's got all the information. What you're seeing here tonight is there, as well as the um, this is an opportunity if you want to register for the convention. Next slide. <clears throat> hotels. Again, this is new information for me, at least, but apparently there are 45 hotels 
that are in the Rotary International Block here in Calgary. <coughs> Most of them are in the downtown core, but there are some out in the periphery. And in fact, there may be some just, um, just on the edge of town, I believe. So um, they're all organized and everything regarding accommodation goes through the, the Rotary International um, booking firm. I can't remember the name of it, but that's all looked after. But hotels are part of one of our volunteer opportunities. Next okay. slide. Signature events. These are the four that I mentioned. Saturday, June 21st is at the Grandstand Show. Sunday, June 22nd, there are two options. One is the New Blood Symphony Orchestra, which played in Calgary a year ago in June, I believe. And we saw it at the district conference in Lethbridge a year ago as well. Uh, option two is a concert series at the Big Four Roadhouse. So, so again, both of those first two are on the Stampede Park grounds, and as well as the Western Ranch Showcase event on Tuesday, June 24th. Next slide, please. Uh, one thing I find exciting is that anybody that is registered with the Rotary Convention and has their name tag, they need that, of course, to get in <laughs> to the Saddle Dome and the BMO Center. Uh, that's managed by Rotary International. But anybody that's got one of those uh, registration tags will be provided with complimentary access to public transit, including buses and the LRT um, for the duration of the of the uh, convention. Next slide. <clears throat> so on the website, um, it says help bring the magic of Rotary to Calgary. And I'm asking this on behalf of the volunteer committee or subcommittee of the HOC 2025 committee to help us bring the magic of Rotary to Calgary. And that's what we're here for tonight to ask you as club champions to help us with lining up our volunteers. Next slide. I said in my email invite to everyone that your primary responsibility as a club champion, as I see it, is to act as a communication link between the district's host organizing committee and the members of your Rotary Club. Tonight, again, it's for the volunteer recruitment, but there will be other opportunities, I'm sure, where the other subcommittees of the big committee will want to reach out and deal with their things like promo, promo and marketing and uh, home and host hospitality that we're really not touching on tonight. We really ask you to communicate with your members, keep them up to date with what's going on from the I'll call it the planning and organization phase of the committee, and to really encourage your members and their families and friends to sign up now for the Calgary Convention 2025. Why now? We need an indication of how many volunteers uh, we have available. We're hoping that the majority of them will come from within Rotary, either in our district or other districts um, across Canada, maybe beyond. And we're also, um, we also have some, I'll call it third party volunteers that will be uh, available. Uh, we're currently, the volunteer committee is currently working on developing a shift schedule. So we know right now, we know the number of volunteer opportunities that exist. We know the days more or less and the times that we need to be there. We also made certain assumptions about how many volunteers we need per shift. And we've come up with uh, some numbers that will help us finalize the shift schedule. And once finalized, the Rotarians will be able to sign up for the specific shift. So what we're looking at is if you sign up, you're going to have direct communications with us on volunteering when it's ready to be rolled out. And right now we're hoping for probably around April 1st. Next slide, please. So... Right now, today, I think we estimate, and I've heard higher numbers, but we, we feel that to properly and effectively uh, support all of these uh, opportunities, volunteer opportunities, over the five-day period of the, the convention from September, June 21st to Wednesday, June 25th, 
uh, we would need at least 1,500 volunteers. And I just listed them there quickly, the airport terminal. So basically a group would be operating out of the domestic and international arrivals terminals, public transit at sea train stations, hotels outside the Nova Scotia Saddle Dome, outside the BMO Center, the signature events, home host hospitality, the barbecue that's potentially planned, and there's probably others that will come forward in, in, as we go through the uh, planning stage. Why do I say outside the Nova Scotia uh, Saddle Dome and the BMO Center? Indoors, that's Rotary International's responsibility. We may be able to or may be asked to provide some volunteers, but largely that's organized by them through their um, Sergeant at Arms program. Next slide, please. So I want to note, because I know this has been, there has been some confusion here, of all that list of volunteer opportunities that are being organized by the host organizing committee, <clears throat> Um, don't require you to register for the convention. Do not require you to register for the convention. However, for those that might want to work on registration or in the general or breakout sessions, if invited, or the House of Friendship, you are required to be fully registered. And now that's five to $600. So it's important to realize that <clears throat> If you sign up for volunteering for the host organizing committee and all those events and specifics that were listed on the previous slide, your cost to you is basically your time and, and getting to your shift. It doesn't require any additional expenses. Next slide, please. So roles and responsibilities. And again, these are more or less right off the, the website. You're there to welcome the delegates to Calgary and the Rotary International Convention. Really, wherever you are, whether you're in a hotel at the airport or outside the um, outside the BMO Center or or the Saddle Dome or at you know just basically be a warm welcome and caring and supportive um, ambassador for Calgary and the Rotary International Convention. Help delegates navigate around Calgary to their hotels and to the convention campus. So again, that's the Saddle Dome and the BMO Convention Center. Help delegates navigate around the convention campus. So being able to ask, uh, tell, show them how to get to the registration, general sessions, breakout sessions, and House of Friendship. I think it's pretty simple, but you know we can always make things complicated. So. I think um, you'll be given information, resource material to help you with that and um, uh, help answer frequently asked questions. And I guess the last one is we're looking at putting volunteers on some sea train stations, north and south, mostly south of the, um, of the uh, convention campus so that we can make sure that people get to where they need to get to and as efficiently and as friendly as possible. Next slide. So this is my ask, I guess, this evening. Um, I think currently we're, and maybe Farid can clarify that, but I think currently we're at a little over 300 people volunteered so far, Rotarians, for the convention. And our goal is, uh, is 500, I think, this quarter. And ultimately, we want to be at 1,500 so that we 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 feel we can cover the requirements of all of these um, particular events that we have on. So basically that's not a live link, by the way, when you get this copy of this presentation, but um, you can just copy and paste it into your web browser and it's going to take you to volunteer local, which is the, the database uh, that we're using to sign up volunteers. Next slide, please. So maybe just before I pass it on to Pat Newman, does anybody have any questions or comments concerning what we're asking for in terms of volunteer recruitment? We'd like to see all clubs in our district support us on this. 
we realize that for out of out of town it might be a little bit more difficult but we're we're really in order to reach the numbers we we need strong support from all of our clubs first off is um i think it was who was first well i got madeline here let's go oh no sorry it was meno Minot. thank you very much rick a quick question so this link is open to anybody at this point or just Rotarians? Just Rotarians. Just Rotarians. Okay, so oh, I'm sorry. Ro Rotar if they come through Rotary, they can be a, a family member. This is just a generic, uh, give us the numbers. Sorry. I wasn't. Okay, Rotary, in my yeah. style, I put things up on Facebook. So do I put that link on Facebook at this point? No. No, I would okay. say no. Okay, no problem. Thank you. And um, then it was uh, Madeline King. Actually, on my computer, it's Peter before me. Uh, Peter, do you want to go? Oh, you go ahead, Madeline. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so I need to ask, personally, I'm feeling that... Um, I would like to see as many of my club members register for the convention as possible. Um, it's a, for so many of them, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, so now in Singapore, we managed to volunteer and uh, get a lot out of the um, out of the convention as well. Um, so is there a minimum number of hours or shifts that a volunteer would need to do? Um, or how can you best combine these two opportunities? Well, I think right now we're looking at, first of all, four hour shifts. This is yet to be, you know, finalized, but we're, we right now are looking at if, if, um, Rotarians can give us a minimum of a four hour shift, we would be happy. I would like to see, you know, if some Rotarians could do more, that's all the better. But that's what that's kind of what our starting point is. And then um, I mean, I think every lot of clubs, I would agree with what you said, Madeline, in terms of participating in this once in a lifetime event. Many of us here tonight have been on multiple or many uh, conventions and each one is different, each one is unique. Yes, there's certain commonalities to it, but I think for, you know, I remember when I joined Rotary, um, they said, you know, you become a member of a club, but when you go to your first district conference or Rotary convention, you then really become a Rotarian. And I can I can advocate for that. I can support that one hundred percent. Have I answered your question, Madeline? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think so. If it's okay with you, I'm going to. Uh, that will be my message. That you know, you want to combine the minimum of four hours of volunteerism with registration if you possibly can. And if you're not going to go for the registration, then do more than four hours. But thank you. Yeah, okay. Peter? Um, well, I'm glad I let Madeline go first because you answered my question. Um, and then just something that's probably obvious, once you get all the volunteer positions established or figured out, and hopefully who's going to go where, I can tell my people they're going to be adequately trained and all this sort of stuff. Like, you know, nobody just wants to be stood on a platform on a sea train and greet people and not know exactly what's expected of them and have all the information handy, right? That is correct. Uh, Frid yeah. and Rob Wolfson are leading the volunteer training program. Um, yes, definitely. It's, it's a significant uh, program that we have to equip them with um, all the tools and resources and information that they can be great ambassadors at the, at the convention. That's great. I know it's early days and there's things to come, but I just want to kind of snuff those questions in the bud if they start to pop up and kind of take away the nervousness for volunteering. 
Yeah, I don't know if we yet. We probably got a schedule uh, as to when we're going to start the training, but certainly our experience with Singapore was that it came way too late. And and we really need to ensure that we've um, we've got the tools in the hands of the volunteers so that they can perform properly. Perfect. Thanks. Good luck you can. Yep. Any other questions? Hearing none or seeing none, um, Pat, can you take over and just uh, address the group in terms of the host or home hospitality night on June 23rd? Mm, I will do that. Thank you, Rick. Um, now, first of all, let's make sure we've got my phone number right. I see the phone number is wrong. My number is actually 416. Eight eight nine five six seven three. So we need to correct that. My um, fault. Me bad. Hey, not a problem. So um, the the I guess at this point the easiest way to reach me if you have to is um, with my own personal email. We were having problems getting my Rotary Calgary one set up. So anyway, when that changes, uh, we'll we'll be able to use that. So the reason why I wanted to talk about uh, home hospitality or host hospitality night is that there's a lot of um, questions about it. First of all, it's only one night. It's on Monday, June the 23rd, and the dinners will go from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So that means that when a club or someone is hosting guests, the guests will be there for six, and then they will be picked up or driven back to um, their hotel or where they're uh, living, um, at nine o'clock. So the other thing is, is that some clubs can't quite decide whether they should do a club event, which means that everybody's involved and they would have a large group of people attend, or whether they should do an individual um, hosting six to eight people for dinner at their own home. So right now we've got a really nice mix. Uh, clubs are coming on board with really great ideas as to what they could do for a large event. Uh, and this includes inside Calgary and includes clubs just outside of Calgary. So what we're doing for any club that's an hour and a half, up to an hour and a half away from Calgary, we will bus the members, the delegates out to you for the dinner. So that in uh, that itself really helps. Um, people also are asking, well, what does the $50 that they're paying, what does that pay for? Well, it basically covers the cost of transportation by bus. So when we have to bus a large group out to any event, uh, whether it's a club event uh, outside of Calgary or it's a club event within Calgary that there are a large number of people, we will have those people joining us at Stampede Park, getting on the buses and going out. And that's what that $50 covers. It doesn't cover any part of the evening as far as food, as far as rental of venue, or anything to that effect. Um, now, the transportation, the buses will leave from Stampede Park. When you're going on a bus to an event, they will leave from Stampede Park. If you're going to host in your home, say in Calgary, you want to host six or eight people or 10 people or a little bit more, uh, then what you would do is you would work it out with those guests as to how they're going to get to your house. Usually they're picked up, driven out to your place, and then they're uh, picked up from your place and taken back to the hotel or wherever uh, they're staying. Uh, <clears throat> generally in Calgary, it's pretty easy to get anywhere within about 20 minutes, half an hour. So what we're going to try to do is work it out so that if someone is hosting, say, in the northwest part of Calgary, uh, we'll try to work it out so that the delegates that will be attending those dinners, whether it's club or whether it's uh, individual hosting, uh, they will try to work it out that the people are within uh, a good distance, especially the ones if you have to pick them up. So then people say, well, how, how am I going to do the dinner and pick them up at the same time? Well, generally what you would do is you'd have other members working on the dinner with you, other club members, and they could pick up a couple of couples and bring them over. Uh, generally, um, eight couples is not too much a, a difficult uh, situation to get them to your home. Um, let me see. What else can I say? Oh, um, uh, the other thing is we've got a couple of members that have uh, said, listen, uh, we have a condo 
we're a party room in my condo or in my apartment. How about if we host someone there? So we've got one group that are going to host 50 people in the condo party room here in Calgary. If there's a club outside of Calgary that is, let me give you a good example, would be say Medicine Hat or Lethbridge or perhaps Red Deer. Uh, those, those communities are a little bit far out for us to bust someone because they might not even get to have dinner. They have to turn around and come back. Um, so what those clubs can do is they can also host in Calgary. They can take people to a restaurant. Uh, you can have two or three members from a club a host six or eight or six or ten people uh, at a restaurant for dinner. So it's really open. The ideas are very open. Whatever uh, you come up with will work. It's it just it's growing from what years ago and several of the conventions I went to, uh, you would go to someone's home for dinner. You would never go to a large event. And one of the reasons why I'm really promoting the home part, hosting at home, is because we have three other signature events, or actually four other signature events, where there's going to be a really large group attending these events. If you host at home or at a smaller group, uh, you actually get an opportunity to meet everybody. And they get an opportunity to meet you too. So it makes for a really, really nice evening. So um, let me see. What else can I tell you on that? That's about it, I think. Um, Linda, are you able to play that uh, that video, the host hospitality night? Yes, I can if you'd like. That would be wonderful if you could, just to, if anybody then has questions. You'll have to go to the website, I think. Yep. Because that's just a screenshot yeah. of the what's yeah. on the yeah. site. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, just give me a second. I wasn't pre prepared. No, for I should have uh, asked you to throw it in there. While you're finding it, uh, Mary, you had a question. You got your hand up. Yes, thanks. Um, Pat, you talked about having some um, home hospitality in communities outside of Calgary. Uh, is there a budget for that? Like, I know that um, I've heard rumors about some communities doing that already. I'm just thinking, like, if Olds was to do this after I talked to our club president, is there a deadline that I need to put forward that indicator? Or how are you organizing your budget with that? Okay. Well, first of all, if you're having an event outside of Calgary, the only part that is paid for is the transportation. Right, but there's a limit to that transportation budget, I'm sure. Well, there's a limit to a certain point. Um, I think the number one thing is that we have to be able to understand is that there will be, we need to have buses to get people out to the dinners. I'm thinking that right now, the areas that would be included in those out of town ones would be Olds, Airdrie, Cochrane, Canmore, Banff, High River, and Okotoks. Those are all close enough and possibly Chester, even though they're virtual. But, you know, those are the ones that we'd be looking at at providing those the bus transportation. Mm -hmm. So we do haven't you, got around... Do you have a deadline, you have a deadline well, that you need that indicated to you if we were to uh, do results? Okay, now... What we're talking, when we talk about transportation, we'd like to have a fairly decent idea by about the end of November. That way we know that we can we can get our contracts in place. So that would be, I would say that if clubs could let us know by the end of November, we should be in good good form. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. That just a question from me picking up yes. on Mary's is in addition to the deadline, do you have a I'm going to call it a proposal template that the clubs could fill in and use so that maybe you collect the same information, but you have a clear, clear picture of what they're proposing. In other words, a business or like a host hospitality night proposal. I don't have something like that. Although you see when someone fills in or a club or an individual fills in uh, uh, hosting on the website, on our HOC website, they put in, what you know, they can put in extra comments. So it would be uh, such and such a club or such and such a person. They put in what number that they're inviting uh, to their home or to their uh, event. So then they can put in comments as to what they're doing. And actually what they're doing uh, really doesn't matter. 
uh, we know that we're going to have them there by six o'clock. And we know that we're going to pick them up by nine, nine o'clock, especially if they're out of town. If they're in town, it's pretty open. Does that answer your question, Rick? Yeah, I think so. It's just, uh, I, Linda just shared the, the, the form on the website. So that, that pretty much is it just to give some consistency and what you receive in terms of what clubs are doing so that, you know, what, what you got a budget for in terms of transportation and. and that's that right. Sort of well, that's but, uh, just that's on that right. though, with those that are in Calgary and the, let's say small group home hosting, um, the host is responsible for ensuring that the delegates are transported to and from. Yes. It's now, not, yeah. Okay. Won't be buses taking people here, there, and whatever in Calgary. Um, you remember that we have that complimentary transit. Yep. So yep. Someone was hosting in the south end of the city. People could get on the transit, go right down to the end. They pick them up there and then take them to their home. Yep. Good. Thank you. Um, was there anybody else that had a question before we go to the video? Yeah, I have a question. Um, we, we, I went out to my club members and got them to sign up for the host hospitality. And we were thinking of having, well, we're planning on having a function at Heritage Park in the Gun Barn, which is where we meet. We're going to have an evening sit down, full blown dinner. Um, we figured we could handle about 47 uh guests that we could pay for. I mean, that would be people coming to town. Um, but I understood when we sent that out that there would be a bus that would be picking these people up and bringing them to Heritage Park. Yes, Peter, it's a large group. So okay. I'm saying, people, if you have around 45 to 50 people that you're going to entertain, yeah. we will make sure there's a bus for you Thank to bring you. them to you and pick them back up. Yes. Perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I get my, uh, my numbers in, in my application. And so you have that information. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay, Madeline. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, in previous, uh, I really like what you're doing. Let me start off by that. But in the last uh, at least couple of RI conventions, the zones have uh, used it as an opportunity to get together. So the fact that there won't be zone meetings that evening has that been cleared through RI or whatever, um, or our zone, um, so that we know that there won't be a conflict? Well, um, we have um, we have been talking. Well, the co-chairs have been talking with um, the person who is in charge of the zone. Uh, the trying to encourage the zone to get together uh, for a breakfast rather than the evening. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, is sometimes these things conflict and oftentimes uh, the zone is on the Sunday night, right? And now we've got two big events on Sunday night. So um, it, basically uh, we're hoping that that will change. If indeed it doesn't, it means that the zone will also be on the host hospitality night which yes. is really unfortunate because yes. I know as, as you, Madeline, I've always attended the zone ones. And so I'm not going to get to it unless they have it at the breakfast. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what we've, that's what we've got. It's a little bit of a conflict. Yes, indeed. Um, well, good luck with it. Thanks. Well, we'll certainly, I know that, um, that uh, Craig and Mark are working on that to see if we can't work it out so that the zone does have the specific, uh, evening, morning, whatever it may be, to be able to have the zone get together also. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Pat. Farid. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, the zone actually moved it from that Monday night. However, we were struck by the fact that actually there are many zones organizing dinners and breakfasts. So are we going to be successful in moving all of them? Uh, no. Uh, at the same time, those are not really sanctioned convention events. That's right. Okay. So, I mean, we, we're not committed to avoiding that. Actually, they are committed to avoiding our schedule. And RI already knows our schedule. And, you know, most of our RI is actually is in our zone. So they know about that conflict. But uh, I, I also realize there's 600 people from zone 26 and 27 
there are 600 Japanese having uh, a lunch. I mean, uh, we have already something like 41 events that are being organized at the same time, and they all want to squeeze them in the same four days. So, you know, uh, we're, but our zone dinner will not be the same time, at least for the Monday. It might be the same time as the Tuesday night. So we're not really that sure of when it's going to end up, but we know it's not that Monday night for sure for the host hospitality. So just to answer that. So. Thank you. Thanks, Farid. Any further questions of Pat? Did you want this video to play, Pat? Yes, please. Oh, yes, please. Thank you, Linda. Host Hospitality Night is an RI convention tradition a memorable evening of local hospitality, an international fellowship. Local customs and interactions between guests and hosts are at the heart of this experience. It's an amazing evening held at Rotarians' homes, restaurants, and larger venues. Your evening will include dinner and transportation, and transportation is available for those with mobility challenges. To attend this sought-after experience, Sign up when registering for the RI 2025 convention in Calgary. The cost, $50 US. Ticketing for host hospitality night will close late April, 2025. We're looking forward to hosting the world for dinner, June 23rd, 2025 in Calgary. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, too. Pat, um... What do you want the club champions to go back to their members with based on what you've shared with us? What are your key messages you'd like them to take back? The key messages is what, what are we, what are we as a club going to do for host hospitality? Uh, and meaning, are we going to do it as a club? Are we going to do it as individuals? That's basically the same message that I'm doing. I'm going out to the clubs little by little right now. So I'm talking to those clubs and getting an idea of or giving them ideas and getting ideas from them. So basically the hope, the club champions really want you to promote hosting a dinner in your, either your home or hosting a dinner as a club. The best ones are the home dinners because you really get to know the people develop lifelong friendships. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Next slide, please, Linda. I think it's, um, Darcy slide. Darcy, you there? Yeah, <clears throat> I'm here. Sorry. That's okay. My turn? Yes, it is. Great. Thank you for the invite, Rick. And thanks for everybody uh, being here this evening. Uh, I'm not going to take a bunch of time. I just wanted to spend a moment kind of giving you a sense of what the promotions and marketing team's responsibilities are with relation to the host hospitality or the uh, host committee. And then I have an ask or two of all of you. So um, we've been working on promotions um, and marketing, I'm going to say intensely, maybe for the last month, trying to kind of figure things out in terms of what our role is as a host committee. And I think where we've landed is that there's really three things that um, our team is responsible for. The first one is to promote Calgary and promote the district globally. And so we will be working with our RI, our, our RI partners um, out of Illinois. And there is a convention promotions committee that we're already tapped into that really, they've almost got a well-oiled machine focused on recruiting registrants for RI conferences. So our role with that, with those groups will be to take Calgary specific content, put it into their machine and use that content to help drive members or drive uh, registrations for the conference. The second role that we have is to help promote the conference within our district and really promote the conference within 5360 and 5370. And of course, that's your role, promoting uh, the conference within 5360. So we are um, trying to figure out how we can help support you in driving registrations for the conference uh, in your role as club champions. And then the third piece, which is kind of tied to the first one, 
is how do we promote 5360 globally? And so we've been trying, Miriam and I have been playing around over the last couple of weeks around some core messaging that we would like to deliver on on behalf of the HOC. And one of the things that we're, we're currently um, throwing around is telling the story of Calgary or telling the story of Alberta over the next 10 months and using our story as a way to incent people to register and come be part of um, our community here um, over the four days of the conference. One Wi-Fi so, cellular. What? One cellular. So here, here I have two asks um, and you can email us um, shortly or you can um, reach out to us and have a conversation with us or you can continue to send us information um, over time. Here's the two questions. What can the HOC do to help you promote the conference in your club? What kind of messaging would be helpful? Uh, what channels would be helpful? Um, would you like us to be managing some social media that you can direct club members to? Um, we're playing around with the idea of Club Runner and maybe um, creating a, um, a special bulletin in Club Runner that goes out to the districts and on some kind of timeline, um, promoting key aspects of it. So looking for feedback from you around what you need to help promote the conference in Calgary. The second piece is what can, how can we promote you? How can we promote your clubs? And how can we promote the district in terms of using that as a way to attract people to register for the conference from around the world and get the story of Calgary out? Rotary will do a great job getting the story of the convention out. We're trying to figure out how can we use the story of Calgary and Alberta to augment how they're attracting people from around the world to come to our part of it. So um, I think maybe I'll stop there, Rick. I'm happy to answer any questions or collect any ideas right now, but feel free to email or, or phone one of us if you like. Rick, you might be muted there. Madeline has her hand up. Yeah, I see that. Go ahead, Madeline. Thank you for ever the questioner. Forgive me. But um, uh, it was really interesting this morning. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with a Rotarian past president from Milwaukee, who's very much looking forward to coming to the convention. And one of the things that we told her about what was going on here, because of the talk we had from Christina, the district governor, was that we were the only district apparently in our zone where membership has increased. And so she was particularly interested in what we're doing that's made that happen. And so my question to you is the way that you framed it had to do with Calgary, but I'm wondering how much it really might be about what Rotarians in this district are doing that others might be interested in. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Madeline, in terms of trying to make this um, a district, even it, it really a, a, a double district event, 5360 and 5370, which makes it a provincial event. Um, so I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, love the idea of just having people start to come up with the stories they want to tell. And, and maybe what we, you know, as part, as we start to build out the framework around how we're going to message Calgary, and I refer to Calgary because that's where the conference is. Um, but, you know, there could be a powerful way to tell stories over the next 10 months about all of the amazing things that happen in these two districts and connect with Rotarians on a way that 
Rotarians are used to connecting with each other. Um, they know about the conference, they know about coming here, but how can we make Calgary attractive to them as Rotarians? And using stories of Rotarians to do that. Certainly, um, one of the things that our my club is um, engaged in at the moment um, is the Jasper situation through through the Rotary Club up there. And I'm just wondering whether that might be a continuing story about how Rotary steps in at home and of course around the world uh, when we have situations like that. And we could use the stories that came from High River and 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 then build on that with what will happen in Jasper over the next few months. Uh, I don't know. It's just a thought. I know that members of my club have lots of other things that they would want to share with you and probably will do, but that's just something that uh, uh, comes to mind as top of mind at the moment. Great. Thanks for the feedback. Madeline, I think we talked about it earlier before everybody got here, but um, the big book sale and the impact on early childhood literacy is a story that needs to be shared, not only within our district, within the province, but around the world, I think, because um, it's something that it's a it's a great story that has we know it has impact. We've got the research to back it up. Yep. Yeah. And, and actually, we've got the opening in a couple of weeks' time of what we're calling Mommy's House, um, and it's Youth Centres Calgary, and it ties into Stay in School, and it's um, after-school uh, opportunities to really break the cycle. And uh, it's the second house, so the first one has been extremely... Um, successful and it's just by the schools that we support with stay in school programs and of course so many clubs do do the stay in school programs and so it will be good to highlight that because it shows what more Rotarians do in different places. Fits in with the areas of focus right? Yeah absolutely. Yeah. Mano. Uh, so Rotary International will be featuring three local projects uh, in promoting the convention, one of which is the Rotary Madame Greenway. The second one is Stay in School Programs. And the third one is, in fact, Marmy's House. So it's already on the list. The professional marketing people at Rotary International will or have asked me for some pictures of Marmy's house as, as we've been uh, preparing that house to for the grand opening in a couple of weeks. So uh, that's already been featured. And it yeah, it's wonderful to connect all the dots. It's too bad that the big book sale is not happening. Um, well, too bad and good that the big book sale is, is not happening during convention time because to see it in operation is absolutely mind blowing. But uh, we've got lots of videos on that and great pictures too. So that that's a great story for um, promoting Calgary. And of course, all the, there's so many projects that all our clubs are involved in and huge impact. I mean, the recent Okotoks one of having an, a, um, an all-inclusive playground so you can wheel a wheelchair onto a swing, like from little things like that to massive ones. We just need to feed you that information, Darcy and Miriam. Thanks, Manol. Darcy, anything further? Nope, I'm good. Thank you all for your time. And uh, thanks again for stepping up and taking on this important role. Yes, I'd like to uh, reiterate that as well. Um, if there's no further questions, again, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you for stepping up uh, as a club champion. And we look to, um, oh, I see Farid's got a comment here. Go ahead, Farid. Yeah, I just had a comment to, to update on the on the volunteering again. Uh, the 
the website now is open for everybody. So this is this is new. Now you can tell your friends, you can tell your family. The only condition is that nobody under 18 is allowed to register. But well, if you have friends, know. family already, they can go ahead and sign up. So this was back to Manon's question. Uh, again, your, your spouse, your husband, your wife, you know, your other half, whatever, everybody now can register. We just haven't opened it outside the Rotary world yet, but we're about to do that with Stampede volunteers and other volunteers. So uh, it will be a priority for us to get the, the Rotary and their friends and family. So that's it. So as of this minute, you can yeah. push it outside of Rotary. Okay, great. Absolutely, yeah. Mano, did you have... Uh, what will identify volunteers amongst the sea of white hats? <laughs> uh, we are we are working on the uniforms on that. Uh, we're actually going to see a few uh, drafts in the next few weeks, but uh, we are definitely worried about everybody being on a white hat, especially after what you saw in Singapore. People were fighting over them, so uh, we we will either have to put something on the hats or go with a different color or different design. We're looking at different options at the moment. So good point. The latest thing that came across my feed is LED uh, lined hats. That was in the DNC convention. Yes, I've seen yeah. that. That makes it so expensive, but yes, Kamala Harris had everybody with the hat lighting oh, up and I love those. I'd love one of those, yes. <laughs> anyway, Even thank you, Philippe. Evil you. <laughs> Well, thanks again, everybody, uh, for, again, representing your club as your club champion. And um, I can say that uh, we don't have all the clubs yet with a club champion, but we're working on it. Our goal is to have every club represented around the table here and supporting the host organizing committee for the Calgary Convention. And um, uh, we'll continue on that note. And I was going to mention that, look, for a follow-up session probably in the next quarter of this rotary year where we'll come together again probably on volunteer recruitment but any others that would fall under the host organizing committee's uh, responsibilities like this evening craig yeah thank you i just wanted to pop in really quickly um, and just say thank you to uh, the presenters uh, here today, as well as all of the champions. This has been uh, a great a great night and it's been uh, one, one of the first. The clubs are gonna be hearing a lot more from us, the champions are. But yeah, I mean, we've one thing we've learned is that sending out emails doesn't work. <laughs> um, you know, if we can leverage the, the champions to get you guys standing up at meetings and sharing this information and sending out emails and that sort of thing, it'll go a, lot, a long way in making everybody feel connected and feeling a part of it. So um, thank you all. Thank you all very much for everything that you do. Thank you too, Craig. Thank you for popping in and uh, participating tonight. That's great. Well, if there's nothing further, I don't see any more hands up. So um, I'm going to like to bring this inaugural session of the uh, club champion session to a close and wish everybody it's almost by bedtime a, a rest of your good evening take care everybody thanks rick yep bye-bye bye. bye everybody thanks everybody bye-bye bye. bye thanks linda thanks bye take care night hi bye kim hi denise take care Yep. Bye Kim. now. Ah, Kim. Uh oh, oh boy, you're in trouble now. I owe you a wine. I owe you a wine. <laughs> you're muted, Kim, so she can't you're hear muted. what you're swearing at her. I can't hear your swear words. Okay, there we go. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was uh, at the Lougheed House thing the other night and talking to Christina. So John um, Crosser has approached me a couple of times saying that he's got people who want to present in breakout sessions. And I didn't know where to go. And Christina said, I should talk to you because you have a direct portal to the, um, the RI, because that's through, that's the international committee that's picking those people, right? So, yeah. yeah, so I don't know what people John has, but I said I would get back to him on who to contact. I'll send you uh, something right now. 
Okay. okay. You need something by email right now. Okay. And I can forward that to John and he can. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, has, yeah. has something come out from RI? Because normally it's done in September. They no, do it's, a call it's already come out. Yeah, it has a. Yeah, the call. I'm surprised out. I didn't get it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That's that's super. Then I can get yeah. that to John, and he'll know I'm not ignoring him. <laughs> yeah, so. and it, it's actually right on their site, but I'll I'll send you the link. It's okay. right on their uh, RI site. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. That's, that's all I needed. <laughs> Okie dokie. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Linda. Uh, yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night.